About two weeks ago, Google announced that it was shutting down its IoT core business next year. Um, the uh, as is usual with anything that includes, you know, the words Google service and shutdown. Um, <laughs> The emotionally invested multitudes reminded us that Google has a habit of shutting down services. And uh, there was some gnashing of teeth. Um, but it seems to me, at least, that at the time, Google's plan seemed sensible. What, uh, what they and analysts said and echoed, um, mostly analysts, is that there hasn't yet been much innovation or, or what you might call opinionation on IoT services from Google or the other major public cloud vendors. And this has created opportunity for third parties who specialize and invest in IoT, uh, including some very tiny, almost invisible companies like Bosch and Cisco, <laughs> as well as vendors like uh, PTC, uh, to create really compelling offerings for customers that run on those same public clouds. So Google says they want IoT users in future to make deals with those partners, and they'll run you know whatever workloads the partners uh, end up boosting to their infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. Makes sense, I guess, for everybody. Um, you know, and ultimately this may have been the point of, of this, you know, business motion that you create an ecosystem and then you stand back and let the ecosystem do the job of an ecosystem. Um, it also points up the fact, I think that value in cloud is continually moving up the stack that if you're a provider, you absolutely have to worry about how to germinate new markets and ecosystems, uh, getting workloads onto your infrastructure, because that's how you get paid. Mm -hmm. If you're not a provider, you need to climb the value stack out of infrastructure and into differentiated apps delivered quickly, right? So you can leverage opportunities as they emerge and crystallize, like the temporary open window for IoT. Uh, you know, and you should consider all open windows as being of limited duration, so you need to move quickly. Um, however, Microsoft, given the same business conditions, right, is making different calls. They reorganized in April their IoT engineering and product management teams as part of the Azure Edge and Platform Group. And now they're consolidating IoT and Edge teams and building out new services on Azure, um, which include things like hybrid infrastructure services, 5G connected offerings, and, a, and of course their whole family of appliances, which continues to evolve, plus IoT hubs, mapping services, and operating system, you know, software only uh, offerings for devices that other people will make. Um, a lot of it, a lot of their talk uh, and action seems to pivot on the existence of Kubernetes, at least conceptually, and on the, the gradual shift um, in IoT and Edge towards these devices being more like small data centers and less like single chip computers in a box. Mm -hmm. um, and on ways of using things like Kubernetes Federation and, and other techniques to unify infrastructure functionality and strategy from the core to the extreme edge and beyond, uh, which is actually, to be fair, something that we have, you know, described and been doing at Mirandus for a number of years. Um, this is, you know, not a new idea, but it is a powerful one. <laughs> 